Hi everybody, today we are going to learn about the timers inside Schneider. So in Schneider we have three different types of timers, on delay timer, off delay timer and pulse timer. So the purpose of the timer is to create the delay. So let's see how these timers are working inside EcoStructure Machine Expert. So let me open the software. So different brands of PLCs will have different kinds of uh, timers but uh, on uh, Schneider we have three different types of timers. When you take for example uh, Siemens you will have uh, four different kinds of timers. When you go for LM Bradley you have three kinds of timers. So it's, it, it differs according to the branch. But on delay timer will be there for all the uh, branch. So first uh, you have to go for inactive, you have to disable the uh, what to say the password protection go for apply configuration so here you can see tm221 ce24 as r is the model available so i'm going for that one but we'll be doing simulation because in the previous video i have shown you how to do the simulation and hardware so for now we'll be doing the simulation okay so in that case i don't have to give the communication parameters for example the ip address uh, the Ethernet IP protocol should not be enabled. All these kind of things in this particular window, we don't have to do anything. So after configuring the CPU, you can directly go to the programming part. So here you can see uh, the runs. So first I'll place a switch and go to the option where you, the timers are available. So here you can see functional blocks. When you expand that functional blocks, different kinds of instructions are available. First you can see timer, then you can see LIFO FIFO registers, shift bit registers, step counters, normal counter, fast counters, etc. So different kinds of instructions are obtained from this functional box. So my requirement is the timer, so I'll click on this timer. So default timer that is available is on delay timer. So I'll place this on delay timer. Yeah, if I place it like this also to work. If I want to drag it more, that is also possible. Now, on the right side of this timer, you can see an option to configure the timers. So when you expand this type, you can see on delay timer, off delay timer and pulse timer. So as of now, we'll go with on delay timer and see how it is working. So maximum preset of preset that can be applied to this uh, timer is 9999. So for now, I'll change that to 10 seconds, I mean 10. And the time base so the default time base is one minute when you expand the time base you can see options like one millisecond 10 millisecond 100 millisecond one second one minute etc so for now uh, i'll choose one second as per the application you can choose the time base in this you can see two options written deep and dynamic preset is there so written deep means if i want to retain the timer for example when it comes to on delay timer it will only work when there is continuous supply if the supply is not there, the value directly go to zero. It means it will reset. But I want to retain the value. For some applications, even if the supply is not there, I want to retain the value. So here my time is 10 seconds. So in between the supply was off, went off. Then uh, the timer was running and it reached 5 seconds. At that moment, it will retain that value. When the supply resumes, it will continue from that 5 seconds. It will go from 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. The function is similar to on delay timer whatever timer you are opting here that function will happen but it will retain the time so here if you want to uh, enable that you can enable it and the dynamic preset option so dynamic preset option means uh, so i am giving the value as 10 seconds here so that means i can work all this timer uh, during the online mode in 10 seconds only but during the online mode if i want to change the value of the timer i have to enable this dynamic preset so that is possible with this dynamic preset so first we'll uh, do it normally, then one by one we'll see how this written div and dynamic preset is working. So click apply. Now when this is done, I want to turn on my output. So let me give the address for your input and the output.
and again if you want to continue the program there are some bits related to this timers so every time uh, we cannot use the same block again and again so in that case we can use the uh, bits related to the timers for example I am going to place a switch when this is done I want to turn on something else so in that case the name of the timer is TM0 here so I'll click on this TM0 there is one option called TM0.Q Q means the output when it is done when the uh, timer delay is finished this particular bit will turn on so I can use that bit in order to turn on another timer another counter uh, might be another output so it can be used accordingly otherwise you have to use this TM0 functional block again and again that is not possible so there are some bits related to the timers which can be used effectively as per the application so now I am using the done bit TM0.Q which shows that the timers delay is finished it finished counting the time I mean the uh, delay time uh, has finished uh, the 10 seconds is finished then this particular bit will turn so now I will connect an output just to show this application and it's not necessary that you have to do it so I'll go to commissioning so just because we are doing with simulator I'll go for this launch simulator click on the start controller let's see how it is working So when I turn on this timer, the timer starts to run. Just because this is on delay timer, in order to turn on something, you are giving a delay. So I want to turn on this output, I am giving a delay of 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, my output will be on. So once this is on, you can see the done bit. It gets active and this is active and corresponding output is on. Okay. When the supply is gone, it will directly reset. That means in between, even if when it is working, the supply is gone also, it will reset, it will go to zero. So that we cannot retain the time. So I'll turn on again. Okay. So let's go offline. I'll stop the simulator and we'll enable the return D function. So I'll enable the return D function and I will also enable the dynamic preset. So let's see how it is working. So when you enable the dynamic preset, so you can see an option called return D when you enable it, the return div display will come here. When you enable dynamic preset, that particular display also will come here. So we can understand from this timer that what all things are enabled inside this one. So if I disable it, that display will go. So when I click on apply, that return div display won't be there. When I disable dynamic preset, that display also won't be there. So from the timer itself, we can understand what all things are enabled, what all uh, features are enabled inside that. So let's see how it is working so then now the timer is working function is on delay timer itself so in between I'll turn off the supply you can see it was 6 and it stopped at 6 it did not it, it, it didn't go to 0 it didn't reset so now I'll start again it will continue from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So when I turn off, it will go to 0. Now, I am going to change the preset. So when I double click on this particular timer, you can see an option is enabled. That particular timer is visible here. I can change the value of the preset. So let this be 50. So on the below you can see an option called apply. So when I change the value you can see that change on this timer also. So let's see how it is working. So 
So now the output is off. So uh, this is how the on delay timer is working with written D function and dynamic preset. So let's see other timers. So now we have, well, let me close this one. I'll place another timer. Change this to pulse timer. TP. Let the time be 10. Time base be 1 second. So I'm not going to enable written D or dynamic preset because for the pulse timer, this written D will not work. So if the supply is gone, it will continue. It will finish that particular the 10 seconds, then it will turn off. So written D won't work for that one. Dynamic preset will work. That's why this only this particular box is enabled. So now click on apply. Okay. Now what is the function of pulse timer? So whenever you give a pulse, the timer starts to run. And the output also will be on. It will work for that particular time delay and then it will turn off. So for example, if you are giving 10 seconds, when the pulse is given to the uh, system, in, to the timer, it will work for 10 seconds and your output also will be on for 10 seconds and then it will turn off. That means a positive signal is only required for this timer to work. And again, as per the uh, I mean, term meaning, the timer's um, I mean, uh, the, uh, the name, like pulse, you can give a pulse for the, a pulse as the input to the timer. It will work with that. So the address will be i0.1. Then q0.2. And let's see how it is work. So for this also you will have the done bit with tm1.q. I am not going to show that because it is similar to this one itself. So let's see how the timer is working. So now I'll turn on, turn off. See the time was working. Your output is also on. Once it reaches 10, the output will be off and it will reset automatically. Yeah, it will reset. Let's see if I'm giving positive pulse what happens. Then also it will work. Finish that 10 seconds and it will turn off. It. Yeah, your output is off. I'll turn off this switch. But the apt, uh, I mean, the input of this pulse timer is, it's a pulse. You can give a positive uh, input also, but a pulse is the, uh, the real input that is given to the pulse timer. So your output will work for that much particular time delay, and then it will turn off. Now let's see how the off delay timer is working. So here I'll change the type to off, 10, 1 second, apply. So here when I change the type to off delay, you can see the written div is also enabled and dynamic option is also there. So the previously when I was selecting the uh, pulse timer, the written D option was great. That means you cannot use that written D option. So according to the timer, it will change. Okay. So now what is the speciality of off delay timer? So when you turn off something, if you want to have a delay, then you go for off delay timer. So for example, you have a motor and uh, you turn on the motor, you have a, uh, what to say, a cooling system inside the mo uh, motor, you have a fan, okay. So you turn on the motor, then you turn off. And the motor will be off, but your fan inside the motor will be working for another uh, 10 seconds and then it will turn off. So in that case, you can go for off delay timer. 
So these are the applications where we use uh, particularly off delay timer and it's not uh, necessary that you have to use only one particular time, nothing like that. These are the basic functions of the timers. You can use it accordingly. I mean, uh, as per the applications, as per the easiness. So according to that, you can, for a particular application, sometimes the on delay timer will be the best one. So in that case, you can go for on delay timer. Sometimes off delay timer will be the best one. So it's up to us how we create the program. Just understand how the timer is working and you can create it accordingly. So now, I launch the simulator. So first let me turn on. So when I turn on the system, I mean the, when the supply is given to the off delay time, the off delay timer gets activated. It will be enabled, but it will not run. It will be enabled and your output is also on. That means it's already done. Once I turn off this uh, supply, see the timer starts to run and your output also will be on. It will hold. It will hold for another 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, the output will be off. So, we are holding the output for another 10 seconds once you turn off the switch. So, this is the speciality of off delay timer. And here, one thing you have to be clear that when you turn on the system, when the supply is given to the off delay timer, it gets enabled, it gets active, but it will not run and your output is also on. So, that point you have to be very clear. Once you turn off the switch only, the timer starts to run. So these are the three basic timers that is used inside the Schneider Echo Structure Machine Expert. Hope that the uh, things are clear with you. So we'll be back with another video.